Society's Cage is a social justice art piece done in the aftermath of the Breonna Taylor and George Floyd murders. It was conceived by a group of architects out of Washington, D.C. with the Smith Group who wanted to do something to contextualize contemporary police murders and um, frame those murders within the 400-year history and legacy of anti-black oriented um, you know, racial injustice in America. This was a, a process-driven design that was programmed by data. And the data was driven by, by questions, fundamental questions that we asked ourselves. One was what is the value of black life? Two, what are the structure, the societal structures that impact black life? What forms do they take? How does it impact gender? Um, and ultimately, those questions uh, led us to lynching, mass incarceration, capital punishment, and police killings um, as the root um, of racialized state violence in the history of, of the Americas. Each facade of the pavilion is inscribed with graphic data graphic statistical data and historic graphs that describe how African Americans have been impacted by the institutions of lynching, mass incarceration, capital punishment, and police killings. That data is then uh, mathematically combined and averaged across the surface of the ceiling um, to create this undulating form, which in essence is the shape of racism. There's two interpretive components um, in society's cage. The first is an educational component um, manifested on the outside of the, of the pavilion where the visitor is informed um, and educated about racialized state violence. We ask all visitors to then um, partake of a participatory and emotive exercise on the inside of the pavilion whereby they're asked to hold their breath in, in spirit or reference to the eight minutes and 46 seconds that George Floyd suffered at the hands of police then to record a, a, a short video stating how long they were able to hold their breaths and to provide a few brief reflective statements on how they feel in the moment. Then to then uh, upload that video to social media with the hashtag Society's Cage. And the idea there is that we want these conversations to transcend the cage. We want people to be able to share these conversations and what they've learned um, with friends and family. Uh, as you could kind of see in the, the pavilion as well, one in four of those rods uh, touches the ground. And that's an intent to basically demonstrate that one in four uh, black Americans are expected to be incarcerated over the course of their life. And we're articulating this cube and, and this sort of gravity and weight through the system of bars. And there's about 484 rods, uh, weathered steel, an intention to um, depict the weathered institution of, of these injustices. Uh, another sort of nuance of that is this, this uh, depiction of the melanin and the, the variety of colors within the uh, black diaspora. Uh, the name Society's Cage uh, depicts uh, the confinement and the, 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 the physical, tangible cube that we're depicting here and how that limits one's ability to, to succeed. The cube is about 15 feet by 15 feet by 15 feet. Uh, above your head as you transition through or meander through the space, uh, there's 50 lights uh, sort of referencing this, this constellation and how black people were, were basically forced to, to find refuge in spaces like the forest. And if you think about things like the North Star and how the, the lighting was sort of a wayfinding, uh, a means of wayfinding, that's ex exactly what we sort of intended with the uh, design of the lighting here in this exhibit. My name's Rainy Antoine Jr. I am Lavelle U.P. Cooper. And we are the composers of A46, the soundscape for Society's Cage. Um, the conceptual basis for A46. Our concept was inspired by the information that Society's Cage um, took into account. We had some uh, moments of uh, deep contemplation, as it were. Conversation. And uh, I, I let him know. I said, you realize when we, uh, when we do this, I said, this is going to take us down a journey, down a path that I don't think you've ever been down. A, a bit of information that we got from the team, uh, they wanted to pay homage um, 
pay respect to George Floyd. Um, obviously, it took uh, about eight minutes and 46 seconds for him to be murdered by a, a police officer. <laughs> We have the mic set up for the organ. Yeah. UP turned it around to his mom and said, Mom, we need you to vocalize on this. So I looked at Miss Cooper. I said, Hey, I want you to vocalize the feeling in your soul of when something has gone terribly wrong and you know it in your gut, in your soul, in your spirit. Something has gone terribly wrong with your child. Something has gone terribly wrong with your husband, your mother, your father, that that mother's intuition. The goal here for A46 was to take you on a journey from the transatlantic journey all the way to a chorus commending the souls of all of the men and women and children that have come across this infrastructure of oppression and trying our best to release mm. that story yeah. from our eyes. In eight minutes and 46 seconds. In eight minutes and 46 seconds. The conceptual basis for this interpretive dance is that this work um, in whole really reflects these states of violence against black lives. And so while there's still hope and there are black folks that are overcoming and are gifted and talented and ambitious and we are successful, at the end of the day, stepping outside of that cage to show that we move past the structures that put upon us. I felt so embraced. And it's almost in the sense that when um, black men in particular look out for their sisters or their cousins or their mothers, um, and that's what I felt. I didn't feel that that voice was sort of absent. And because I was a part of this and welcomed and invited, I mean, that was very telling to me that the woman's voice was there. I'm very excited and passionate about Afrofuturism and talking about, you know, these new ways of thinking and, and doing and moving, um, you know, for black folks without various constraints. But when telling our history and our story, the reality is that it's, it can be a somber one. And so within it being somber, um, I needed to figure out a way for it to be uplifting but at the, and in the same vein, I realized like I'm here as an artist being able to explore and express myself because I have a supportive um, spouse. I am a mother of five children. And that is part of the story, too, that I could that I have the time and ability to be engaged and be able to to um, to be present in that moment, being there at dusk in the sun setting and being in a quiet flat space with these beautiful lines and angles and embodying that this moment this this stillness this quiet loud stillness and and being able to work through that um and it just felt good it felt good to dance and to be free with my body and to be telling these stories and feeling these stories and embodying these stories and just being able to live that we took something very ugly um, in the form of racism and tried to render it in a beautiful way to draw people in to have necessary but uncomfortable conversations about racism. 